Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today's video is a really fun one because it's actually one that you guys requested from me, which is to create DIY projects with materials and supplies that I already had and things that you guys probably already have at home as well. So I'm gonna take you guys over to my DIY stash and see what we can come up with. So here's a look at my entryway. If you guys caught my makeover, then you saw how I transformed this space, but this is what it's looking like after a little bit of use. So you see things have changed, like I have boxing gloves in there. By the way, if you're looking for a good workout at home, get some boxing gloves. This has seriously been amazing. So most of my craft storage is along this bottom row here. So let's go inside and see what we can find. This is my clay drawer, and I feel like you guys are loving the clay stuff, so... Let's see, I still have some clay left, so maybe I can do this one project that I've been wanting to do for a while. Does anyone else's craft storage look like this? Like everything's where it should be, but it's a little messy. I think that's all we need from this pile. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so I also wanted to go into my yarn drawer just because I have so much yarn. I have a bunch of scrap yarn, which I think we could probably do a project with some scrap yarn, so oops, oh <laughs> no. I will try to use some scrap yarn. I have some green and yellow yarn that I haven't really used yet, so maybe I could do something with that. The rest of my yarns are pretty neutral. Maybe we could also use one of these white ones. I will put it over here as well. And then I have other things like punch needling. I'm not a pro at yet, so I will hopefully have a video on that soon. For today at least, I am not going to attempt that. And now I'm gonna go into this last drawer and see if we maybe can make something. This is kind of like my miscellaneous raw items drawer. And I have things like mirrors in here or extra caning. Dollar Tree actually started carrying a whole bunch of these. Look how cute these all are. I'm still trying to brainstorm some things with this, so if you guys have any ideas, definitely let me know in the comments. I would love to hear some of your suggestions. I'm gonna go ahead and brainstorm some ideas with some of the items that we picked out. Hopefully they will come out good. I will try my best to stick to these items that I just talked about, but if anything, I might go back in and pick something else. So let's see how these go. Let's jump into the projects. Hello from voiceover Tina. For this first project, we're starting off with some green yarn and I'm also going to use my pom-pom maker to create a pom-pom. And you can find these online or at your local craft store and I will have the link to this one down below. This comes in a set and I'm using the second largest one to create the size that I wanted to fit inside my container. And if you're not familiar with this fun craft contraption, you basically just take one of these arms, as I like to call it because I truly have no idea what the technical term is, but I'm just gonna pull it out and I'm starting to wrap my yarn around it. And you'll see that I'm just wrapping it to fill up the whole thing until it gets super duper full because I want my pom-pom to be fluffy. If you don't want to buy a pom-pom maker, there are so many other ways to make pom-poms with items at home. So you can use things like cardboard or forks. So I will leave additional resources down below if you're interested in learning those techniques as well. Okay, now that we have one side down, you're gonna see how full it is and I'm just gonna close that and then bring that same piece of yarn through to the other side and then I'm gonna start wrapping around the other arm of the pom-pom maker. And as y'all saw, I have a lot of yarn for someone who doesn't know how to knit. So I was just searching for some easy projects to make with yarn without knowing how to knit or crochet and this one is a super cute idea and it's also super quick to make as well. Now that we're done with all the wrapping, you just wanna close it up again and then cut off the end. So essentially we've created all these little loops and now we're just gonna cut it down the middle and I'm just using my scissors to cut it little by little since this pom-pom is super full. All right, now that that's all cut out, I'm gonna take another piece of yarn and I'm just gonna slip that through the middle of the pom-pom maker and I'm going to tie a knot as tight as I can. And I always like to do a double knot just to make sure that it's super secure. Then I'm pulling my pom-pom maker apart and now we have our poofy little pom-pom. This next step is optional, but I wanted to try it since I haven't before, but you can choose to comb it out a bit to add some extra fluff and volume. To make this look more like a cactus, I'm gonna shape my pom-pom to more of an oval shape, and I'm doing that by tapering one side of it. 
Normally, I would just cut it evenly all around to create a perfect ball, but I really wanted to emulate that cactus shape by elongating it, but you can totally choose to make a rounded ball if you'd like because cacti come in all different shapes and sizes. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty good and you can always go back and cut it again if you need to later, but I'm just gonna repeat those same steps with a different color yarn and I'm using my smallest pom-pom maker to create a little bloom for my cute cactus. And there are so many different ways that you can create your cactus. You can totally make arms for it with more pom-poms or you can even take a whole bunch of tiny pom-poms and put them all together to make one big cactus. And you can even use some fun colors like pink or blue or pastels. There are so many options to really make this project your own. So for this smaller pom-pom, I'm actually just going to shape it into a ball and I'm making it even tinier by cutting it down even more. Now that we have both pieces done, I'm going to attach the small pom-pom onto the larger one and I'm placing that slightly onto the side of the top with some hot glue. You can pop this into a little planter or even DIY a pot to perfectly fit in with your vibe. I'm using a pot that I painted in a previous DIY video and I think it's looking super cute. You can also fill it up with additional yarn or stones or whatever you'd like to keep it in place and this project is done. If you don't have a green thumb, this project is perfect for you because this plant does not need water or sunlight so it will never die on you. You can truly personalize this cactus from the colors to the size down to the shapes and get super creative with it. I really hope you like this project because I think it's adorable and it seriously makes me so happy just looking at it. For this next project, we're using some of that air dry clay in that tub. It's lasted me quite a while, and this project is perfect if you have a small bit of clay left over and you're not too sure what to make with it, this is gonna be for you. First, I'm kneading it a bit, and then I'm gonna flatten it out until it's a little under an inch thick in width. Then with a straight edge like my ruler, I'm gonna cut small shapes out of it, and the first one I'm creating is gonna be a little triangle, and you'll see that I'm making different shapes for each one of these. I'm also taking some slip and I'm using that to smooth things out as I'm shaping it. I kind of want them to look like stones or pebbles, so they definitely do not need to be perfect. Once I'm happy with that shape, I'm gonna take that same ruler and I'm going to cut a small slit into it. And this is gonna be wide enough to fit a photo or a card. And since air dry clay does shrink when it's hardened, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just to ensure that whatever I put in it will fit. And as you go along, you can always go back in to smooth things out again if you find little fingerprints like I did from handling it. So I'm just gonna repeat this process a few more times making different shapes and I'm gonna create a little set here. And with each one of these, I'm playing around with the shapes and you can see that they are quite small because they're gonna hold my little instant photos. So I made one that's kind of a trapezoid shape and I also made another that's a ball shape so that they're all a little bit different from each other. I also made some bigger pieces to use cards, so you can really customize these to function how you want them to. And you'll also see that I'm flattening the bottoms of them just to make sure that everything's gonna lay flat and stand upright. So now I'm letting them sit overnight to dry completely, and depending on the thickness, this should take a full day to harden. After the clay is hardened, I'm using a sanding block to smooth on the bottom side even more, and this just adds some more stability to each holder. Alright, so now it's time to get creative and I mixed up a fun color palette including some more browns, a pink, and even a turquoise color, but of course you can customize this to whatever colors you'd like. And I'm painting each one of these with an even coat of paint and letting them dry in between the coats. I ended up doing two coats for each one of these and it's also important to note that you should be dry brushing these when you're painting them because air dry clay is not waterproof. If you have a paintbrush that has some water on it, it'll add some moisture back into the clay and you definitely don't want that because it's going to make the clay wet again. And when that happens, the paint gets all muddy so try to avoid this as much as possible. Once both coats were on there, I made sure to let them dry completely before moving on to the next step. 
So I'm gonna add some interest to a couple of these by adding some splatter paint and I'm watering down the paint first and then using my finger to flick the paint onto the piece. And for this tiny white one, I wanted it to look more like a splatter pattern so I used a thicker paint and I also flicked the brush a lot harder and closer to the clay. So you'll see that these splatters have a little bit more of a linear pattern to them and I think they look so cool. To create more of a true speckle pattern, I'm going to water the paint down a little bit more than the previous mixture, and I'm gonna do a lighter motion to get these little dots onto the clay. And I just love how this white looks against the raw sienna color. It's always gonna be one of my favorite little color combos. For a third option, I'm gonna paint on a very thin layer of Mod Podge, and then using my fingers, I'm tapping on some little gold leaf flakes. I know there is a specific kind of glue for gold leafing things, but this method works really well for me, and I don't have to buy extra materials, so that's always a plus. I really love how gold leaf instantly makes whatever you put onto it look a little bit more expensive. It just looks so beautiful against these bright colors and even against the plain white background, it also just adds a little bit of sparkle to the piece. So these are looking so good and I'm just gonna seal everything by using this Sculpey Glaze in a gloss finish just because I wanted a nice shine to them. And again, since air dry clay is not a waterproof material, I always suggest to seal it with something, whether it be a glaze like this one or a clear spray paint, you definitely wanna protect it to make sure that it lasts as long as possible. These little photo stands came out so cute. I really love the organic look that they have and how well they go together, even though they're all different colors and shapes. They're just the perfect way to display my instant photos. And as for the larger ones, they are also just so perfect for cards or regular size photos on an entryway or a side table. These are seriously so fun and easy to make and I absolutely love them. I seriously love how each one of those projects came out. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I would definitely have to say that the cactus is my favorite just because it's so cute. I mean, how freaking cute is this? I really love it because I don't really have a lot of cacti around my house. And plus, I never get them to bloom. So having this fake little flower makes me so happy. And I think it's just so adorable. If any of you recreate this project, please tag me on Instagram so I can see because I think it would be so cute just to see how everyone's cacti comes out. I also wanna take this time to share some of your recreations. So I'm gonna put them here on the screen. I'm so blown away with everyone's creativity and how you really make it your own. And it just makes me so happy whenever I get one of those tags. Also, I wanna take this time to say thank you guys all so much for showing me love on Instagram. Instagram. It's so much fun just getting DMs from you guys and seeing how your projects come out. So keep them coming. I truly love and appreciate them. As always, if you like this video, make sure that you give it a big thumbs up down below and subscribe for new videos every single week. There's so much good content coming out. I have a couple of home things planned for this month that I'm really excited to share with you guys. So stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.